My name is Phil Heslop. I'm a senior computing officer who works for the Digital Institute over in Culture Lab. My name is Dan Jackson. I've been working in the iLab for around two years now. Uh, my name is uh, Professor David Leet. My name is Ola Piktina and I'm a PhD student at Newcastle University. I'm Scott Windiat. I'm a senior lecturer in the School of Education, Communication and Language Sciences. My name is Nufaz Linda Ishak. Um, I'm a PhD candidate. My name is Gavin Wood. I'm the mobile developer on the social inclusion project as part of the wider digital economy. I'm Saad Alantiri. I'm doing a PhD in iLab. My name is Madeline and I am a lecturer in interaction design within the School of Computing Science. Um, I am Jabir Muslamani. I'm a PhD student for Applied Linguistics. So my name is Claire Hooper. I've been working with iLab since I first came to Newcastle University in January, so that's three months ago. Well, my name is uh, Sugata Mitra. I'm a professor of educational technology. Hi, my name's Paul Seedhouse and I'm co-director of iLab Learn. I'm Man Preston and I'm a research associate in iLab Learn. iLab Learn is a practice-based research lab which supports and promotes research and development of digital technology in learning and education. It combines the expertise of staff and students in pedagogic theory and practice and computing science. Well, the first project that we had was the French Digital Kitchen Project, and the reason we started with French was that uh, that's the international language of, uh, of cuisine. And uh, then we wanted to move to other languages, and English is, uh, is an obvious one, it's a world language, so I was very glad that uh, Linda chose to investigate uh, English. Mm, back in my home country, um, I... I'm attached uh, to poly one of the polytechnics and in polytechnics in Malaysia we have a hospitality department so uh, I thought it's a very good idea to use the kitchen because we are we have uh, courses uh, whereby we train students to become chefs so I thought it's very pertinent to what I'm gonna do when I go back to my home country. Well it's it's now um quite easy for an incoming student to use the kitchen to develop um, materials for a completely different language. Let's say um, Chinese as a world language and cuisine and uh, Arabic as well would be another, uh, another example. And we're working on setting up authoring tools to make it really quite easy for people to, uh, to program the kitchen for uh, whatever kind of language and cuisine uh, they want. So, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity for PhD students to work in different languages. So my PhD is called Digital Technology and Play Therapy. And as a part of this, I designed and evaluated the software called Magicland. Um, for the use with primary school children and their play therapy sessions. And this was developed by Gavin Wood, who's done the great job on it. He's actually programmed the software. Well, my background for maybe the last um, five or seven years is working in, with real computer games in the commercial market. And what I've tried to do with Ola and what we did together was we brought that my background into um, play therapy so I'm used to working uh, with children and games and, and making an experience that's fun. And in what Earl is trying to do, she wants that experience to be fun as well. I'm doing uh, my PhD on tabletop technology. And I want to see how this uh, emergent technology can be used for uh, collaborative strategic reading within computer-assisted language learning. Uh, I've been researching the use of computers for language learning for about 30 years, so I have a very broad range of interests um, and a broad range of topics that I've, seen, that I've researched over these years. Um, at the moment though, I, I have four main interests. Um, one of course is tabletop computing um, with uh, Java, um, the use of tabletop computing for language learning. Um, well, uh, tabletop technology can be used for um for reading and writing at the same time. So we could see um, how the tabletop can be used for you know, uh, 
uh, the process of reading and writing and how this collaborative strategic reading can be helpful while using the tabletop, how can it be helpful for writing the process uh, with regard to second language learning. My background is in English language teaching and education and technology for me was a passion, was an interest. So I found this project uh, a very interesting way of doing technology with language education. And technology really introduces the possibility of shifting the teacher slightly out of the way and introducing a kind of new relationship between the student, the learner, and the subject to be learned. Oh, well, I think it's a very nice environment um, having like-minded people doing similar projects in the same place and having the technology around us all the time and uh, having our own space. I think it's a very interesting and enriching experience. experience. You know, the discussions that evolves and the intellectual kind of um, development we, we grow, go through, I think it's a very enriching experience for us. Yeah, so I've, I've got two hats when it comes to the iLab, really. Um, the first one I talked about already is that I'm a, a technical support person for some of the specialist equipment that we have over in the iLab, such as the kitchen and the tabletops and uh, things like that. Uh, but my second hat is I'm also a PhD researcher who's doing a PhD part-time, and my PhD is on education using the digital tabletops. Well, um, my, my uh, PhD is in computer science, but without this access to iLab and the expertise of the people within iLab, it would have been a very one-sided PhD without the educational input. So my supervisor team, are some of them are members of iLab, uh, David Leet is my second supervisor, and they've basically given me the educational half of my PhD, which has very much got a foot in each camp between computer science and education. The Coach Lab is a very interdisciplinary uh, research environment and the nice thing about the relationship with iLab is it gives us an opportunity to take the applications that we've been developing and actually see how they might work in a grounded real world setting. It's also advantageous because the guys in iLab of course have got that educational uh, theoretical background so the work is informed not only by the technological knowledge but by the educational information. I think it's a really great avenue to use some of our technologies. For example, the work on tabletops um, or some of the ubiquitous computing work where we have sensors in the environment, we can actually apply them and actually see them used in something. Mm. So I'm a computer scientist by training, but I think of myself as an interdisciplinary person. Um, and last year I was in an industrial design uh, background. And this particular job was very much about um, helping out with this this piece of work between the two labs, which is using computing technology in an educational setting, which really appealed to me uh, in terms of looking at application of technology. It's a really interesting research agenda around how you might use technologies in the classroom and I'll use a buzzword here to help the teacher orchestrate um, the teaching and learning interactions that are going on there. So there's emotional awareness which you could do through the subtle stone or through other types of technology um, but you might also there might be interesting projects where a teacher could start reflecting on where they're spending their time in the classroom, which students they're looking at, which students they're not looking at, the type of tone of voice that they're using. Um, you might have technologies that could help the teacher know how long students in the classroom have been waiting for assistance or whether a child is stuck on a particular task. I think there's, uh, for me, there's a lot of interesting possibilities that technology could sort of start helping help teachers better manage that classroom experience. But um, as someone who's you know, passionate about user-centered design and participatory design, it, for me, is really about involving students and teachers in thinking about, you know, given what technology can do, what would we want it to do in a classroom? What would be useful for you? So combination of self-organized learning and remote presence uh, forms viable way for children who do not have access to good schools or good teachers. Uh, the, the questions that I'm working on right now, the research questions are,
that if this is the case, if children can teach themselves pretty complicated things by themselves, they need only one ability, the ability to read and understand. So a logical new question is, can children learn to read by themselves? Because if they can, you've turned the system upside down. I proposed uh, this question uh, along with Nicholas Negroponte of the um, uh, MIT Media Lab. And as a result, I now spend about six months a year at the MIT Media Lab as a visiting professor trying to answer the question, can children learn to read by themselves? And um, well, the answer is going to be found here in between the iLab and the MIT Media Lab by somebody, most likely a young person. I think we've barely begun to scratch the surface in all of these areas. So I think there's a lot of scope for students to come here and, and work with us in these projects, for staff in other parts of the university, perhaps looking at um, other languages, for example, in, in relation to some of these projects. There's a lot of room um, in the field of HCI and, and working with uh, children. Uh, for example, there's children in hospitals that are, are less mobile or they might be um, ill. And um, so tabletops, digital technologies, uh, give them experiences that maybe they can't have at that time. We're not just interested in technology for technology's sake, we're interested in what difference it makes to learning for students in all sorts of contexts. And basically we want as many staff and students to be involved uh, as possible because the, the technology is here, it's really cutting edge technology, it gives you an advantage in terms of originality for your research and publications and we want people to come and work on projects with us, with people from computing science and make the most of this fantastic technology. So how do you get involved in iLab Learn? Well, postgraduate research students on the EdD, iPhD and PhD pathways are encouraged to write proposals based on the installations you've seen in this film. Prospective students at the university are also welcome to apply and can do so by contacting one of the members of staff that you've seen in the film. Um, the iLab's work on education is um, actually considered quite groundbreaking, very new, very much in tune with the with the cloud infrastructure that exists in our, in our world today, which most educational institutions don't actually leverage. We intend to do that here in this lab um, with the help of students, researchers, and of course, academic staff. Um, I run a course called uh, uh, Information and Communication Technologies for Development, particularly with reference to children. And uh, in this course, we eventually look at the future of learning and where it's headed. Uh, there are many exciting questions uh, about what it all means when children have access continuously and all the time. I sometimes put it to, to, to students in this way. If you had access to Google continuously, broadband, and if there was no way to tell that you're accessing Google, it's inside your eyes it's, or something like that, what happens to education? What happens to examinations? Everything has to change. And if we are lucky, it will change from here.